Hello boys. So this particular lesson is for uh, a boys of class 9, A, B and C. Alright. And this is from your short stories. Uh, which is the topic, uh, the, the name of the lesson is Chief Seattle Speech. Alright. Now here, the particular lesson. Now Chief Seattle was a leader of this leader of a tribe in Washington Territory in the 19th century. So his long and moving speech in 1854 has been widely called, cited as powerful, bittersweet, plea for respect for Native Americans, rights and environmental values. The speech is considered as a response to Governor Isaac Stevens' proposal of surrendering or selling the Native people's land to white settlers. His speech delineates the Native American's reverence, reverence for life and respect for human connection with nature. So if you look at the Native Americans, the Native Americans are more like pagan, they are nature worshippers and uh, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are tribes who connect with nature very much. So there has been a lot of settlers, white settlers coming in like they were the Native Americans. The word native itself suggests that they are from America, right? So these Red Indians, all right, other natives, na natives of America. But then, when the foreign settlers came in, all right, when the white settlers came in, uh, it started to disturb their peace, and also like uh, there was a lot of disturbances in terms of uh, their environmental values. So they, so that is uh, that is the problem that they started facing. And because of these white settlers, all right, so their land, the uh, the the tribes that they were living, they were living in for, uh, since a very long time, and their land were you know taken away by the white settlers, and as we as I've said earlier, it started to disturb their connection with nature. So in this particular speech, the chief of a particular tribe, he is making a moving speech. And uh, to to the particular governor at that time, that in 19, 1818, that is 1854, and at that time it seems that the governor uh, was Isaac Stevens. So he is making a proposal of surrendering or selling the native people's land to white settlers. So his speech, like his speech there, is cited as is termed as something which is very powerful. All right powerful and bittersweet plea for respect of for, for respect of native americans so now here the author okay so the author he was uh, born in the year 1786 and lived till uh, and lived till 1866 so it is actually translated by dr henry a smith and uh, this particular, uh, this particular uh, writer, he is famous for a speech that he delivered in like uh, this particular story is very famous for the speech that was delivered in 1854 by the, by the chief. Now, the, what does the speech highlight? What is the main highlight? What is the main importance of the speech is that it talks about nature's sympathetic role in the lives of chief Seattle's tribe. All right, and youth's impulsive nature led them into war and destroyed them and everything on earth has life, air, earth is sacred. Now, as I've told you, they were pagan. That means they were nature, nature worshippers. All right, so they were non-believers. So in this case, their, the aggression, the aggression that the foreign settlers made was quite a hit, quite a hit for them because it started they started to deteriorate as a tribe. Now, ironic references to George Washington as natives good for, uh, as natives good father. George Washington was known as good father. The God of the whites is different from the natives, great spirit who guides them through their tradition for the natives and their ancestors, their land and culture is sacred. The native and the whites will have a common fate and the native tribes will, would agree to sell the land only if they are allowed the privilege of visiting their land. The whites will never be alone. The land will swarm with the invisible dead 
of Seattle tribe. All right. So this particular story is about these speech. It highlights all these all these things in particular. So I'll be sharing the notes with you also in the in WhatsApp and in the website too. Now the speech. When you look at the speech, now it highlights. Chief Seattle begins his speech by saying that nature has sympathized with his people for many centuries. Today it is fair, but tomorrow not to be the same as the great chief in Washington wishes to buy their land. The great chief also sends them word of goodwill and friendship, but he is in little need of their friendship as his people are not as strong and powerful as compared to the natives. Now, Chief Seattle says there was a time when his people were large in number, but now they are nothing more than a mournful memory. All right, that means the tribe is deteriorating. He will not mourn over the untimely decay. Youth is impulsive, and young men often indulge in revengeful acts, considering them to be gainful. In times of war, they even lose their own lives, but the family that waits for them at home bears the loss. So the natives and the white settlers should never turn hostile to each other. That means they should never be enemies to one another. Chief Seattle then refers to George Washington as the good father who promises the natives that if they do as he desires, he will protect them. Seattle says that the white people's brave men will provide them strength and will protect them from ancient enemies. Natives' God is different from the colonizers' God. Colonizers means people who have come from other, other places and have made a particular place a colony. Like for example, the Britishers came to India and made India as the colony. So the Britishers are termed as colonizers. All right. So here the colonizers were the white settlers. So native in America. All right. So the native's God is different from the colonizer's God. The God of the whites protects only the pale faced children and forsakes the red Indian children. The God of the natives, the great spirit has also forsaken them. If they have a common God, then he is partial to his European children. They are two di distinct races having separate origin and se separate destinies. There is a great difference difference between them. All right, so these are the troubles that they are facing. The, the natives are facing. The natives have been living in America for uh, for centuries. This is what we learn. All right, and uh, when the white settlers why are they when the white settlers came in, they started to push his tribes away, like you have many like you have with the uh, you know with development now if you see a lot of development happening around happening around in the world all right so there are people who have already been living in that place for example now when we look at the hills all right people originally say that the lepchas were the original the native uh, settlers they they were already the native um, you know people of the hills all right and there were there are people coming in from other places they started living in harmony they started settling here all right so now and they started settling here and if you look at now of course they have given been given uh, a key position in the society because they are the natives of the of this uh, of this place but if you see it is more like a uh, cosmopolitan society there are people coming from every from every walk of life and we are living in harmony but we do acknowledge isn't it we still do acknowledge that the lectures are the early the native the natives of Kalimpong so however when you look at this there is a place of this uh, there is a sacred place uh, this is my understanding of 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 the lectures there is um, uh, in in North Sikkim, all right. In North Sikkim, there is a place, all right. Uh, I am sorry, I uh, I cannot give you the name because I don't remember it right now. But uh, there is a place, all right. So in that place, particular place, is considered as the heaven. Is as consider is considered as heaven because it is believed that every lepcha dies, all right. 
will find a place there. So that particular place is a very sacred place and I, I do believe that this particular place still exists, all right, in North Sikkim, somewhere in North Sikkim. Uh, near Mangan, you'll have to, uh, you know, uh, drive right across and it's a restricted area and uh, it's a very protected area and also the the the, the river Tista originates from from that particular from that particular place all right so anyway so they are pagans they worship worship nature they they believe in they believe in finding providence in nature nature protects them they believe that if they protect nature nature will definitely protect them back so here this is exactly the the thought of the native uh, native americans which is the red indians the red indians believe that if you if you you know if you love nature nature is going to love you back so they believe in coexisting with nature they believe in living in harmony with nature all right so they do not want anything that uh, that would disrupt the balance of nature. So when the settlers started to come in, when the settlers started to come in, uh, come in America, right, come to America, uh, they were being pushed off from their own territory. And it was a very heart-wrenching experience for the chief to say it in a speech that he is selling, he is going to be selling a part of his land to the foreign settlers, all right. So in this case, so in this case, this particular, uh, this particular speech is a highlight of emotions, all right, how this particular chief, not wanting to sell his land, now is forced to sell his land to the foreign settlers. Now, he extols that there is a sacredness associated not only with the ashes of the ancestors but also with this land which is their resting place but the whites wander far away from their ancestors graves the natives have close association with the dreams of their men the ancestors of europeans after the death cease to love them but the native americans never forget the world that gave them their being and identity they keep on loving its valley. See, now this is particularly what we're talking about, the tribes. They're very connected to nature. Okay, so they love their valleys, its rivers, its magnificent mountains, and its lakes. Not a single star of hope hovers over above the native's horizon. The winds moan and the grim fate follows them. Their situation is similar to a wounded doe that is being hunted down in a, ver in a few more years. Their race will disappear. With settlers too will have the decay which though twisted awaits them. However, sharing the common destiny will help both the races. Seattle says, that they will accept the governor's proposal for surrendering their lands only on one condition, but they will never be denied the privilege of visiting the tombs of their ancestors. The land is sacred and pure. Every hill, every valley, every plain, and even the rocks which seem to be lifeless are holy. Chief Seattle ends his speech by saying that the white man will never be alone, even when the last native would have perished, these shores will swarm with the invisible dead of his tribe. He requests white men to deal kindly with his people as the dead are not powerless. Seattle by the end states that there is no death, death but only a change of words. Okay, so this is the highlight of the, the speech. Now the characterization, you see Chief Seattle, now he is the chief of a particular tribe and there are the Native Americans and the whites, okay? Okay, so here uh, in the next class, I will also be talking, giving you detailed, uh, detailed characterization and the themes and I will be discussing the story. I will be giving you the detailed summary and the, I'll be also explaining the story in detail to you. All right, so thank you so much for listening up to now. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you, boys.